Tesla and Elon Musk just had their quarter three earnings call and I accidentally uploaded our road trip video at the exact same time, which was a mistake. So if you haven't seen that, go check out that video. But I thought I could cover some of the biggest points of the call and we could have a discussion about that in the comments below. So let's talk about Tesla's quarter three earnings, Cybertruck, full self-driving, and a lot more. So first of all, I'm not gonna to get too much into the numbers or anything, but Tesla did great on their earnings. They made a lot of money and they were able to realize a lot of cash that was sitting on the sidelines from full self-driving. If you're not aware, because all of the features of full self-driving aren't available yet, Tesla doesn't actually use the money that you pay them for full self-driving. They just put it aside and they say once the features are released, then they can claim that money. So with the release of Smart Summon, they were able to claim a certain portion of that money, and there's more sitting aside waiting for them as they release more features like stop sign and stoplight recognition. Elon Musk did say that he thinks full self-driving may be feature complete by the end of the year. He wasn't super sure on this, but he said it could be in early access um, or available to customers by the end of the year. So I would expect that it's going to be delayed a bit, maybe early next year, hopefully, um, but still really exciting that they're even that close. Now feature complete means the car can do what Tesla claims for full self-driving, meaning it should be able to take you from home to work with no interventions, but you will need to monitor the system and there may be cases where you have to take over. He said that it's not gonna cover all cases all the time, but in general, most of the time it should work. So that'll make for some pretty fun Tesla challenges, trying to get all the way to work, not interacting at all. I'm not sure how the car will handle dirt roads or gravel driveways, but we will learn. Elon also did mention that he thinks reliable full self-driving will be available by the end of next year, so the end of 2020. And by reliable, he means you don't have to pay attention anymore. That is huge to me. I mean, at this point, we still have to pay attention even on the highway. And Navigate on Autopilot has gotten really good on the highway. I mean, I have multiple days in a row where the car drives me to work and I don't do anything, I don't intervene. If you've seen some of my Tesla challenge videos, you know that's true because I record the whole thing and you can see my car does everything in those videos. Uh, but I still have to pay attention. I still have a hand on the wheel. And for them to say by the end of next year, just one more year, the car's gonna be doing stop signs, stop lights, highways, changing speed limits with school zones. I mean, it's just, it's a lot. It's also a little hard to believe, uh, but I've realized this guy is always doing things with his companies that people thought were impossible or next to impossible. So I'll just say I'm looking forward to it. Cybertruck was mentioned really briefly. I am so excited for the Tesla truck, which Elon is now calling Cybertruck. So we can call it that from now on. Elon said he thinks it's Tesla's best product ever. And that is really exciting. Beyond that, he didn't say too much. He said an earnings call wasn't a proper forum for a product reveal, but it should be coming up in November if things don't get delayed. Um, so we'll know more about that soon. I think Tesla should just put pre-orders up on the website for the truck without any information, no pictures, nothing, and just see what happens. I think they'd get a lot of reservations even with zero information on the product. There is another over the air update coming out for the Model 3 S and X that's increasing power. So when I first got my Model 3, I have the all wheel drive and it did zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds, which is really fast already. But a few months later, I got a software update that lowered my zero to 60 from 4.5 to 4.4 seconds, which isn't huge. But considering I got that update while my car sat in my garage for free, uh, that's pretty awesome. So Tesla is claiming they're doing this again with an over the air update. There was some data by Wugs on Reddit. He also has the all wheel drive and he actually saw an 8% performance increase for his Model 3 when we got the update last time. So who knows, maybe we'll get a little more. Um, I mean, this could shave another 0.1 or 0.2 seconds off the zero to 60 time, which just would be huge. They said for S and X, there's a 3% performance improvement. I would assume that's for the Raven S and X since those are now using the motors from the Model 3. At least one of their motors is in common with the Model 3. And they said that they're always working out efficiencies with their motors and learning new things, but we'll see when the update comes out. They also mentioned stronger regen, which is awesome. So as you let off the accelerator, your car will slow faster and put more energy back into the battery, which is great news. It means your car will be more efficient. They also mentioned faster charging speeds for the standard range Model 3. Speaking of S and X, there was a question about Model 3 sales cannibalizing S and X sales. And Elon's answer kind of made me cringe. He said that they're still producing Model S and X more for sentimental value, um, which is really strange to me and kind of makes me feel bad for S and X owners because it's a more expensive car. It's supposed to theoretically be a better car because you're paying more money, it's bigger, it has more range. Um, but I think a lot of people have this feeling that Model 3s kind of get nicer treatment, especially in the software department. Um, and Elon just comes right out and says it. They did do a little backpedaling saying that the S is still a great car, which of course both of those are great cars. I'd actually love a Model X myself. I think that's like 
my ideal car that I would want. But it does make sense in a way. He said they're niche products because they are so expensive. Most people can't afford them, of course. And the whole point of Tesla as a company is to get everyone driving electric cars. So building $100,000 electric cars isn't really the best way to do that. So from that point of view, I get where he's coming from. I'm more focused on the vehicle side of things on this channel, but Elon also did mention that version three of Solar Roof is gonna be announced tomorrow. I'm really interested in solar products. They're a little too expensive for me at this point in Michigan. We don't get a whole ton of sun. And solar sales were also up, which is really helpful for Tesla's profit. So Gigafactory 3 is doing really well in China. It's just starting up, just starting to produce Model 3s. And Tesla said that Gigafactory 4 will be announced by the end of the year, and that one will be in Europe, uh, which people have been wanting to hear about for a long time. That's kind of probably the last major place that Tesla needs to build a Gigafactory before they start making them you know, in other places as well. And there's a lot of speculation this will be in Germany, uh, which would be kind of funny, but for now, nobody knows. Uh, we will find out soon, and that will be very exciting. More cars can be made and delivered to Europe a lot faster. Because right now what Tesla has to do is make all their cars in the US, in the beginning of the quarter, if you've ordered a Model 3 recently, you know your delivery has been pushed back to December because for the first two months of the quarter, they're sending them to the rest of the world. So now they'll have a Gigafactory in China, they'll have a Gigafactory in Europe, and they can just make all the cars for those regions all the time. They don't have to kind of do this craziness of shipping the cars across the sea and delaying deliveries and doing all of that. The last thing that was really exciting to me is they said in the next few weeks, there's gonna be a big update for Smart Summon using improvements from all the data that they've generated of everybody using it. So there've already been over a million Smart Summons, which is just crazy to think about. There's been a million times that cars are driving themselves completely with nobody in them, or at least nobody controlling the car at all, in parking lots all over the United States and Canada. And this is one of Tesla's huge advantages when it comes to full self-driving. They have millions of cars on the road constantly collecting data and sending it back to them. Well, the earnings call was really exciting. I had a lot of fun listening to it. If you haven't listened to it yet, I'll put it in the description. But let's have a conversation in the comments down below. What things did you hear about that you were really excited about? What are you looking forward to? What are you maybe skeptical about? From this point, I think the company is only going to get better and bigger faster. They're going to be making a lot of money. They have a lot of products, a lot of services. I mean, they talked about insurance. They talked about new cars coming out. They talked about solar. They have batteries. They're just kind of taking over this whole energy and transportation sector. Uh, and a lot of the other companies just seem to be asleep at the wheel. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you down in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.